afternoon, I'm Dave Gilvere, a river scientist in geography. Rivers are complex, dynamic and connected networks, as you can see in this reach scale schematic here. They're complex within the floodplain and there's connectivity in terms of hydrology, chemistry and ecology, both across the floodplain and with the groundwater beneath. Now these ecosystem attributes, they bring about multiple benefits or what we would call in modern parlance ecosystem services. This is at the reach scale and the same is true at this scale from the source to the sea. They're complex, they're dynamic and they're connected landscapes. And these landscapes should be of value to society. But what we've done traditionally is reinforce, disconnect and create uniformity in our rivers to alleviate a single hazard such as flooding or to focus on a single resource such as water supply. There has been silo thinking at the expense of these pillars of a healthy river system, connectivity, complexity and dynamism. We can see this here in this theoretical diagram, which is a timeline. We've got these different types of services that were discussed earlier. And then in the river impact phase, we've probably simplified the river through embankment and straightening to allow something like floodplain agriculture to take place. And you can see here with provisioning services, it's resulted in this expansion of agricultural activity on the floodplain but at the expense of other ecosystem services, such as flood alleviation, carbon sequestration, and uh, for example, biodiversity. There is what we call a river restoration or river rehabilitation, and that is what 21st century river management is about. Trying to readdress the balance so we get a more equitable supply of ecosystem services. So what are these river rehabilitation techniques. Here we've got a very simplified straightened channel at the top and to improve fisheries they've re-meandered it. They've created complexity in the landscape, a greater range of hydraulic habitats to support fish. Here they've removed rock armour on the left hand side um, to create dynamism in the landscape and they've introduced woody debris um, to create complexity and this can slow the flow of the water, create biodiversity, create more productive fish populations. And in this final example, we have introduced complexity, connectivity, and dynamism in the landscape with these rock field cages that were put in to create a stable channel, an engineering, um, engineering feat to allow the bridge over the, the top to occur. And um, in its place now, we've got salmon and trout inhabiting that river and getting their way to the spawning grounds. What I did a couple of years ago with colleagues is really start to look at all the different river restoration techniques that are available, and we, we catalogued 17 or 18, and then used a, an approach of thinking about how each one of, was of benefit to different um, sectors. So physical habitat, fisheries, diffuse pollution. And then we had a scoring system and you could tot up which was the um, most suitable um, river restoration technique to bring about multiple benefit. One of our key things was that um, it depends on the time scale. Something like floodplain forests gives us the, a very high total score, but it is a very um, long term proposition. So it depends whether you're looking at WFD um, directive timescales or sustainability. We've moved on then to start mapping ecosystem services on rivers and assessing river rehabilitation assessment. This is the link between the features we make and ecosystem services. We're using Google Earth to quantify um, those features in the landscape and we're looking at new approaches to that as we speak. Here's the sorts of links, and I was very surprised this morning to hear in the healthcare 
um, talk, the, the concept of sinuosity in channels and straightening. Sinuosity of a channel, a meandering channel, brings about many natural ecosystem functions that are of good value to, to mankind. So just finally, we're developing the tools to make these assessments. The River Allen in Scotland in the 19th century was straightened to allow for the railway and for floodplain agriculture. There's a plan to re-meander it, remove the embankments, and what our development technique is, is showing, this tool, is that going from an area where ecosystem services have been degraded, we can now measure how we've got a more equitable production of, uh, of ecosystem services. And we believe that that is going to be a useful tool to think about how we use our rivers and river floodplains in the future and how we can restore them. Thank you very much.